Okay, so today we're going to show you how to change the rear differential fluid in a 2000, well this is a 2005 Sierra. This should work on 99 up. So the things you're going to need is a 13 millimeter wrench to take the differential cover off. You're going to need a pan obviously to catch the fluid. You need a scraper of some sort, this is a razor blade, to take the old gasket off. Then you're going to need a new gasket or silicone, I chose silicone, and then you need three quarts of synthetic 7590. Now this is a big controversy. This truck, these G80 locking differentials do not take any kind of additive. So you do not have to put that in there. Just get 7590 oil. I chose Lucas. I've got it in another truck and it seems to do great. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I did was chalk the front wheels. Just put a brick under there. When you lift the back of the truck up, it's going to want to roll forward. So this just keeps it from rolling off the jack and the jack stands. Next, we're gonna jack the rear end of the truck up. So get your jack and slide under here. All right, so I choose to put my jack right in the center of this bolt right here, straddling both sides. Get it lifted up and then put a jack stand under each axle tube. And as you can see, I've got a, not a bad leak, but anyway. Next step is we're gonna take these bolts, start to loosen them, put a pan underneath, obviously to catch the oil. All right, so I took the 13, they're 13 millimeter bolts. So start taking them off from the center and kind of go up each side. I went around and loosened them all a little bit and then you want to take them loose from the bottom going up. And the reason you want to do this, you don't want this thing to all fall off and just fill you full of fluid. So if you take it off a little bit at a time, leave these top guys in and then you can pry this out just a little bit. Don't bend it, but pry it out enough where the oil starts to fall. Once it gets drained out, then you can go ahead and remove the rest of them. All right, so as you can see, I've got it completely off of there. Um, the next step is gonna be to clean the gasket off. As you can see, bits and pieces of gasket. So make sure you get that super clean, use a razor blade. Don't gouge it, but just scrape this gasket off. Use some cleaner to clean that. And then same thing on the rear cover. So make sure you get it clean as well. Don't bend it, be careful, because it's pretty flimsy. Make sure you don't bend it. I'm going to use silicone on the new one, so I'm not going to be using a gasket. I just don't have good luck with rear end gaskets. They always leak. Uh, silicone seems to do a lot better. So I'll show you a picture before I put it back up of the bead of silicone that I'm going to run. All right, so I ran a bead of silicone all the way around the outside, around all the bolt holes. So now we're ready to put that thing back up in there. So when you do this, I cleaned off all the bolts. Use a little bit of blue Loctite on the bolts and then hand thread them in. It helps if you have somebody to help you hold it, but if not, you can get it done. All right, I threaded all these in after putting some Loctite on them, and I did it in a crisscross pattern. So I just hand snug these with the ratchet. I went top, bottom, side, side, and so on. Kind of like you put a wheel on. Anyway, so now I'm gonna go back and torque these all to 30 pound feet, and then we should be ready to put some oil in it. All right, all of the rear cover bolts have been now been torqued to 30 pound feet. Make sure you don't forget to put your brake line brackets and emergency brake cable back in place. And then we're going to go to the front side. On the front side is the fill plug. Now all that takes is a 3 8 inch extension. We're going to pull that out. It takes about two and a half quarts, 5.5 pints. So you're going to need three quarts. Fill it up put that back in and torque it to 24 pound feet and we're ready to set it down and take it for a drive now after you drive it it'd be a good idea to pull it back up and just check and then of course check underneath to make sure there's no leaks after it sets overnight 